many pages are better use them accordingly and then similarly i use the same columns option everywhere in my entire document uh, and look and basing on how i use the begin doc begin columns and end columns document you can write contents below below and above and then you can split the document into several sev separate parts uh, everywhere uh, slides everywhere and as per your choice and you can go about with that and this way and this way uh, this way uh, you can write code snippets as well i made some changes everywhere like this you can you can include different environments within the slide every slides like these split it split them again and you can also have the bold face options like what i told earlier in some parts you may have some to bo uh, to bold specific parts of the documents uh, it's easy how do it how to do about with that is it's, it's like this um where is that yeah uh let me just look at that part uh, yeah if you if you use text bf you can bold certain parts if you use text tt you can make it appear like uh, typewriter text like that the same commands that we use for styling spatic uh, changing the font style of particular uh, segments of the data uh, can be used over here so no it does it so they are also handy they come very very they, uh, they come very very handy uh, in um, presentations they come very handy in presentations and one more thing is one more thing is sometimes it's better to have uh, you have the frames written in with fragile condition why i mean this actually allows you to this actually allows you to dynamically change the size and uh, uh, size of the document so if ever if you see this page over if you see this slide over here i have written this in fragile so if i were to remove this slide fragile part and if i have to run this you see there's a problem over here and where did where is it wrong as an extra thing what did i miss all of them start with a okay it just says that something is not proper over here now if i just put fragile back fragile back i run this there's not a problem i guess it's possibly uh, i guess it's possible because sometime when you write contents sometime when you write contents uh, the values, uh, the whatever you type over here, they might disturb a lot. They might disturb a bit, and uh, to uh, they might disturb the contents a bit. So it's better sometimes if you have some issues or to have some sensitive data written in it, which kind of disturbs with your contents. For instance, uh, like these, you see this curly braces. These curly braces are actually uh, Python. Uh, these are actually for use for defining dictionaries in Python, but these are also reserved symbols. So if you were to use symbols like these, then uh, I think then these kind these may trigger some trouble. Well, this may trigger some trouble uh, while using uh, the document while using the, while typing the contents in the page. So in the slide, so just be cautious about it. I will be cautious about it. So these kind of cases, you can just use the fragile and the fragile option so that that uh, frames become a little more flexible and they're a little more lenient, so uh, lenient to work with. And that's about it. And that's about it. And uh, everything else, what you see is just uh, code snippets and everything. You can write code snippets. And uh, by the way, if you want to write these code snippets in, uh, in, the, in using the minted option, you can go about with that. All you have to do, uh, all you have to do is that you just have to put that uh, uh, flag shell, shell out uh, flag, uh, shell out flag, and that's it. And with that, it's fine. With that, it's fine. Other than that, it's not a big deal. And uh, by the way. And if you want to compile this from the terminal, uh, you just have to use PDF LaTeX and then the file name, and that's it. Nothing much. It's, it does not need a specific stuff. And uh, if you want to uh, include bibliography, you can also do the same, just like how you did in uh, the, the how you did it in uh, uh, 
articles and reports and present articles and reports you can just like that you can do it over here not a problem and uh, Beema allows that option as well and uh, what else yeah you can yeah, have code snippets and you, if you want to create a table of contents that's possible we just saw saw that and uh, other than that you can write tables not a problem bullets everything it's all possible all these are possible now the downside of if I, if you were to if I were to be perfectly honest if I were to say the downside of the presentation is that well uh, present uh, writing a making a presentation in LaTeX takes a large amount of time when compared to making a presentation in uh, in, in, a, in a slideshow okay but the, the advantageous point is that if you want to write equations and if you want the equations to align up nicely and you want to have a firm control of it then for LaTeX is LaTeX has those features but in presentations those sometimes it those kind of features might just uh, change when you could change the operating system or change the change with the versions of the slideshow present slideshow um, program you have okay that's one of the downsides you have so it's like a you just have to compromise accordingly if you ask me if if you ask me go for latex presentations like beam presentations only on if and if, if and only if you have uh, you have a lot of technical dog technical content with a lot of mathematical contents to be presented like this okay and if, if, if you are trying to make a presentation wherein you have very less mathematical contents and uh, I just I just I request you to just don't use Beamer because I'm not saying wrong about Beamer just that it just takes a lot of time it just takes a lot of time and uh, if uh, Beamer presentation is extremely professional extremely professional so that that's that's one ad that's one advantage you get and if you want to make a, a, f a funny presentation i mean if you want to make a funny presentation a lot of fancy animations and stuff beamer can't do that that's another down that's one a trade-off you get that's one trade-off you get so the thing is uh, based on which which one you, which kind of features you want you just want do you want a lot of aesthetics and animations and visualization or do you want some robust con robust controls and simple and simple uh, presentation and stuff based on which which one do you uh, just weigh it according your needs okay okay and that's about it if you ask me uh, I, I stopped using LaTeX I stopped using LaTeX because uh, uh, because it kind of makes get it uh, gives me a little uh, it just I just got a, got a fed up with a lot of typing for LaTeX presentations uh, that's my personal opinion. If you guys like it, go on with it. I'm not, I'm not uh, discouraging you. I'm just being honest about my my opinions over here. On the other hand, uh, on the other hand, I st uh, my I prefer to use iPython notebook presentations because those are much more dynamic. Those are much more dynamic, and you have the same options to write source code inside them. And those options are much much simpler. They, they you are. Uh, Granted, you have to do a little more commands over there, but those commands are much not too complicated when compared to not too lengthy or uh, rigid as you have in LaTeX. The, the, so that's a kind of a compromise. It's in the, it's in the midway. Uh, it, it has less reasonable amount of emphasis, like uh, what you have in PowerPoint presentations, and it also has some kind of a rigid rigid controls, like what you have in uh, Beamer. So that's kind of a compromise I get. That's all. I'm okay with that. Uh, but thing is, my thing is, uh, choose one accordingly. In my system, I uh, since I have Python, I work with Python. I use that. Uh, if you guys are not working with Python, choose Beamer or the other. Choose Beamer or any slides or pre present or any presentations like PowerPoint or Impress and LibreOffice or any other presentation package presentation software available in other op offices. Other office systems like Star Office, Open Office so on okay that's my opinion and well i'm just saying that uh latex lat beamer presentation is just quite awesome just has all the features and it's quite very very good though in my opinion it's just it's a little hard to it's a little hard in the sense it's a little annoying because you just have to write a lot of kindness back and forth for every frame and stuff that's the annoying part other than that beamer presentations are very very simple very professional it's very simple to work with that and also so if you want more documents and stuff, 
if you want more uh, documents or uh, guidance or anything relevant to beamer and if you want a user guide of it what you do is that uh, just type till tanta beamer now till tanta uh, is actually is actually a doctor and he's a prof is actually a, a phd phd graduate sorry he's actually a professor and he's also a doctor he's the one who made beamer class beamer class and uh, what he done is that he has if you type till tanta beamer and then the first thing one of the first things that will appear is that the users guide to beamer class version 3.1 as on as on this date it's 3.0.1 and if you just open this up in a web in, in a separate page uh, you'll have an exhaustive uh, collection of all the comments that are available in beamer you know, how to change fonts how to change the uh, press how to change the import uh, packages classes how to include colors how to make themes then theme templates how to manage presentation material how to make animation slides and stuff how to include images of different types how to make so include sounds um that's interesting he has a uh, sounds as well and there are also slide transition which you can work out i'm a lot of i missed a lot of stuff over here but uh, i mean i just started uh, telling you guys only the bare minimum essentials you want okay and then he has options to include bibliography appendix append appendices footnotes uh codes versus and so on and so forth there are a lot of them over here and he has also options to create its own frame and stuff navigation symbols and stuff some guidelines workflows and uh, some basic presentations everything okay and if you guys are so into uh beamer beamer presentations you can definitely have a look and this is a very good material very good material is actually a lengthy documentation but an exhaustive documentation if you have a look at it and this will be very very good enough more than good more than sufficient for you guys to address a large number of contents in large number if uh, large number of doubts in pima okay and this document is available in is available in uh, sourceforge sourceforge if you just go to this web page in sourceforge it's available over there you can just have a look at that and it's down i guess it's if it i guess it's free to download that's why it's available like this you can have a soft hard you can just have a soft copy if you want if you soft copy if you want and I just if you just go to this link over here okay okay he has changed this to the bit bucket he has changed this to bit bucket and he has a pack i guess he has a, a repository over there which we which you which you can just clone up and use and get it not a problem not a problem and that's about it and and that and that's about it and this is actually your full fledged explanation of how to make presentations in beamer hope you guys hope i cleared a lot of uh, hope hope i cleared a lot of questions and queries you might have on making presentations in making presentation in latex using beamer beamer thank you guys for watching and in the next tutorial the next tutorial and in the next come in the series of come next the series of next tutorials we will be making our own thesis template template okay thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys next time bye